Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this devlog I want to show you guys two plugins I've been working on for Godot 4. So these are going to be available on my Ko-Fi and Patreon pages for supporters to download, and soon I'll also have it on the itch.io store page. So the two plugins are World Time and Item Drops. So World Time creates a calendar system to make the actual in-game time make sense as opposed to just real world timing. So you'll see that I have a slider bar in the bottom left hand corner where I can scale up how fast the game speed is going to run. And I have some calendar UI at the top indicating the hours and minutes. There's also seconds, but I just chose not to display that. And then we have day, month, year. So when the calendar is progressing, I added in some other components, such as I guess you just saw the day to night system. So you can add in times of day, uh, which currently allows you to change the color of the lighting. But let's slow down the game time a little bit again, and I'll talk about some other stuff. Okay, so over here we have a gatherable node. The gathering component of it is more the item drop system rather than the world time system. But as a tie-in to that, there is a component you can add to any scene in your game called an aging component. So the aging component will increase the age of an object at an arbitrary time that is defined by you using a aging progression updater component, usually as a child component of the calendar system. So what that basically would do is as your calendar system increments the time, a number of seconds, hours, minutes, or even days, then it's going to age everything else in the game that has an aging component. So that makes it easy to have scenes upgrade. So for instance, we can go from these corn seeds to a corn sproutling, a corn juvenile plant, and a mature corn plant that is harvestable. And that's done by increasing the age of these different objects. So I think right now I have these nodes set to age on a per day basis. So if I increase the game time speed, then we'll be able to quickly get to those age increases. So let's just go to a very fast speed. And we can see we hit uh, day two there. Um, some other components happened, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But you can see how these scenes are aging as the days progress. So if I slow it down and I just manually add the age to those components, then we'll be able to see how all of these transform into their fully grown corn plant. So that of course brings us to the item drops component. And what you might've noticed is that uh, these nodes are gatherable. So being able to give a gatherable component to different nodes in the game, anything you wanna be harvestable, which could be crops like these or rocks or trees, if you're harvesting other things like wood, uh, whatever you need to do. So a gatherable node can have a drop table and each time you harvest on the drop table, it'll drop different items into the game as a instanced scene. So that can be done as a percentage based chance of drop. So you could make something guaranteed to drop and you can make one node have a chance to drop multiple items. So maybe you have a 100% chance for corn and a 25% chance to drop seeds for a new corn plant. So what's really happening when we harvest the node is that a scene is spawning into the game. So just like any other scene, a level scene, these are just items on the ground. But to actually define them as an item that can be picked up, that's where you would give them a pickup component. And then the player over here has a take pickups component, uh, which is just one way of making it so that we can take those items off the ground and add it back into the player's inventory using a resource. And of course, with these systems that allow you to have stuff like this, it, it makes a pretty perfect fit for my other plugin that I made in the last couple months called Grid Builder. So if I grab a placeable object from Grid Builder in here, like the corn seeds, let's close the menu, then we can place new instances of our corn seeds onto the ground. So this is as a scene. So of course we can place these in here. And as soon as they're in the game world, they're going to be ageable as well. So we can let the game time run and uh, increment them as the days change. Then we're going to have those uh, upgrade into the scene one, scene two, scene three, etc. stages. Or we can just add a bunch of ages to them. And now we have a bunch more corn plants inside of the game. So as far as placing the corn goes, uh, the only thing I think I'd actually uh, change here, and you'll notice that of course spends the resources up here, the corn seeds, is uh, checking to see if these tiles are marked farmable. So I did add a building rule into Grid Builder that allows you to check for such things. And I might do that before uh, actually doing the tutorials for these two plugins. But pretty much that's the gist of how the world time system works, the item drops, which are separate plugins. They do separate things, but you can see how they can work together, but one is not required for the other. 
And uh, that's pretty much going to be a wrap for this devlog. So in the next few days, I want to get out some tutorials about exactly how to set up and use these plugins in the current form. And I'll be trying to push for a initial release on uh, them as well. So for right now, though, you can go on my Ko-Fi or Patreon pages. And if you're a supporter, you'll be able to download them as a early dev version for both of these plugins and also the Grid Builder plugin as well. So if you have any feedback or if you try them out and run into any bugs, I'd love to hear about them. But until my future tutorials and videos for Godot, thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.